KTM breathes life back into the resounding name SMT after 10 years of abstinence. On the never straight roads of the motorcycle dream destination of Sardinia, the brand new 890 SMT has to prove what it's made of. The KTM 990 SMT was a brute bike produced between 2009 and 2013. Known from the Super Duke, the first generation LLC 8 with 999 cubic centimeter displacement and 115 horsepower was downright scary back then. In the SEMP version, this immense power could be enjoyed in a more upright riding position by the standards of the time. Due to its versatility, the relatively short production period in the ABS which was rare in those model years, the KM 990 SMT is very popular on the used market and still fetches high prices. The Kiska design that unites the two doesn't seem to detract from its popularity. So is the bar unmatchably high for the 890 SMT. So the bare numbers speak for the new 890 SMT, although it produces 10 horsepower less and also has to make concessions in terms of displacement. The weight saving of almost 10 kilograms achieved by the modern frame and the leaner engine makes up for this. The demo mode, which KTM presented for the first time in the 890 Adventure, was hotly debated in the press and among potential buyers. The fact is that KTM is making the comprehensive Tech Pack electronics package, consisting of MSR, Quick Shifter, Cruise Control, and Track Pack available to every buyer to try out during the first 1500 kilometers. After that, he or she decides which features they want and pays for exactly that. For us journalists, this makes comparisons more research-intensive, but we are used to over completely equipped test bikes from very many brands. It's also important to mention that nothing is deactivated when it comes to safety-related functions. Traction control and ABS work in all cases, depending on lean angle, BMW practices this differently, for example. In the specific case of the 890 SMT, for example, only the quick shifters would be mandatory for me, the modes Rain, Street, and Sport are perfectly sufficient for my needs in the saddle. One feature that is standard in any case and is a ton of fun, but hardly any other manufacturer offers in a street bike, is the Supermoto ABS. When this is activated, you immediately feel transported back to your unreasonable youth in the saddle. Thanks to deactivated rear wheel ABS, even the most inexperienced rider can paint wonderful black lines in the asphalt. Real experts will then find what they are looking for in the track pack where the engine drag torque control, nine stage, and the throttle response can be regulated in three stages. The colleagues from the nimble faction in the one piece were thus more transverse than upright on the road. The KTM's five inch color TFT display, also already familiar from the 890 Adventure, is clearly laid out and intuitive to operate via the four way switch on the left hand end of the handlebar. It offers a clear display of all important information. The backlighting can be adjusted and the display is easy to read, even in full sunlight. Particularly well done are the animations including color accents, which impressively show which setting is currently being made. The buyer is thus protected from having to plow through the manual to learn the generic KTM terms by heart before getting into the saddle. When it comes to the suspension of the 890 SMT, the close relationship to the 890 Adventure is particularly noticeable. The road-oriented KM also relies on a fully adjustable BP Apex suspension fork at the front, while a central shock absorber is at work at the rear with adjustable spring preload and compression damping. Premium elements share the suspension travel of 180 millimeters. A different house number than in the adventure bike are the powerful brakes with radially mounted four piston calipers and a proud 320 millimeter double disc in front and a 220 millimeter double disc in front and a 260 millimeter double piston brake system in the rear. Here the SMT clearly plays on Duke level, but more on that later. The first stage of the winding Sardinian dream route takes the riders inland, starting from the coast. It gets hilly and two junctions later we find ourselves on a third order road that hasn't seen a ride from the road maintenance department for quite some time. 
Smaller and larger potholes repaired in torn up areas, constantly changing asphalt, in short the toughest conditions for any suspension. The first positive surprise follows. You don't notice the suspension travel, which has been reduced by 20 millimeters compared to the Adventure Sister. The SMT confidently irons out even the roughest bumps, as if it were nothing. The comfortable seat also contributes to the fact that the driver, even in the roughest conditions, spinal discs gently comes forward. I had expected the ergonomics of the 890 SMT to be much more aggressive in view of the hill climb pictures circulating on the internet, which brings us to surprise number two. True to the motto, everything can, nothing must, it is absolutely possible to move the SMT relaxed over long distances. The main reason for this is the variability with the help of which the already very successful basic setup can be adapted to individual needs. The handlebars are adjustable in six positions and can also be moved forward or back 15 millimeters by means of additional holes in the triple clamp. During the test ride found in my group, the aero fast but only just over 1.60 meters tall supermodel pilot Laura, who is responsible for social media at KTM and I with 1.87 meters and probably twice the volume, good space on the machine. When maneuvering, I then naturally had an easier time, but Laura was also able to reach the ground with both foot tips. People who switch from the old 990 SMT to the current one will probably also experience a surprise in the response of the two-cylinder and the general accessibility of the SMT unit. As a connoisseur of the modern l sight inline 2, I was confirmed in my affection by its linear power delivery and the problem, free and smooth throttle response even from low speeds. Of course, I would have preferred 121 horsepower on the data sheet, but even in the adventure layout, the parallel twin is an absolute power. Absolutely nothing gets away from you in everyday use. For some years now, KTM has been using the slogan ready to race for all products that come off the production line I in India or more recently in China. This creates a self-image for each individual model that is tailored to the respective class, which at the same time also acts as a burden on the motorcycle. Consequently, KTM itself, but also the informed motorcycle enthusiast, expects an orange to be right at the front of the class in terms of sportiness, in terms of sportiness and riding fun, if not to set the benchmark. The segment of high leg but street oriented touring fun machines with 17 inch front wheels is not infinitely deep. Breaking it down, you're essentially left with Yamaha's Tracer 9 and the now somewhat aging BMW F900 XCR. Compared to these two bikes, the SMT manages the race positioning effortlessly. The slightly conservative BMW definitely can't hold a candle to it suspension-wise, and while the Tracer 9 has a 14 horsepower advantage on the credit side, it also has to move 20 pounds of extra weight with it, a trade-off that is avoided as much as possible at Winklework. Nevertheless, as soon as the SMT is available in Austria, a tough comparison test will show whether the KTM can hang the winner's wreath around its neck in this chapter. As a rule of thumb, you can remember, the narrower and more winding the track, the more fun you have in the saddle of the SMT effortlessly, the motorcycle, which had carried the pilot so well and comfortably over the worst roads in the morning, vehemently bit into the Sardinian asphalt. Partly responsible for the change of scene was the adjustment of the suspension during the lunch break. Rebound and compression damping of the fork closed by five clicks, the rear central shock absorber adapted by means of practical hand wheel by one turn in the preload, and one sits on a clearly changed motorcycle. The adjustment range of the suspension is dimensioned for practical use. Despite the long suspension travel for a road-oriented motorcycle, the transparency and feel for the front wheel is always there. Compared to the KTM 890 Duke ER, it lacks a bit of precision, but for a motorcycle suitable for travel, the level is impressive. When aggressively firing out of tight turns, you're glad for the standard steering damper. The punchy twin just has so much power that the front end always becomes light in gears, one and two, and sometimes even in three. A word about the riding modes. Due to the extremely grippy asphalt in Sardinia, the rain mode was not tested. In dry conditions, the street mode is the right choice in 90% of cases. The throttle response here is a bit softer than in sport mode and fits really well. Whether or when to select the sport mode is purely a matter of taste. For example, real racers like Pikes Peak record holder Chris Fillmore, who accompanied us at the presentation, drive in the freely configurable track mode with the street throttle map. The Michael Empower GP, fitted as original equipment on the 17 inchers, presented itself as the perfect companion on sporty missions. The abrasion pattern after our ride resembled that after a cleanly driven track day turn. The Sardinian roads consume the black gold already at 20 degrees outside temperature 
in a magnitude that Among Us journalists joke that the original tires would probably not survive the demo mode distance. However, it proved how well the tire performs at low temperatures in our test on a Duke 890. The brakes on the KTM 890 SMT deserve a lot of praise. The double anchor at the front already bites wonderfully with little hand force. The tuning is almost perfect. You can also casually perform braking maneuvers from higher speeds with one finger. However, this sharp initial bite is also noticeable in the fork's pronounced bottoming out. This is due to the long suspension travel and can't be completely eliminated even by adjustment work. Compromises have to be made somewhere, at least as long as KTMZ suspension, with its anti-dive technology, remains ahead of the 1290 models. The KTM 890 SMT is a touring bike. The TD is in the name, and rightly so. Touring, here I can again connect to the surprises that the KTM 890 SMT gave me in the saddle. The wind protection is worse in the standard configuration than in the Adventure Sister. So far, so clear. This circumstance can, of course, be changed quickly and for relatively little money with a visit to the KTM configurator. This applies at least to the upper half of the body. The smaller tank and the emitted cheeks are responsible for more airstream reaching the pilot's lower legs and feet, which is more of a blessing than a curse on Sardinia even now in April. The already mentioned comfortable seat offers not only for the driver reason for the joy, also the pillion takes comfortably place on it. The space conditions are even more comfortable than on the 890 Adventure. Incidentally, the SMT has taken over the maximum permissible gross weight of 450 kilograms from the Adventure, which makes the touring variant the payload king, 244 kilograms, a figure that makes seasoned touring enduros pale in comparison. There is thus more than enough capacity available in order to make the optionally available suitcases, and or also still the top case, well full and to operate to two extensive kilometer gobbling. The tank, which now holds 15.8 liters, probably allows even in this configuration ranges around 300 km. With a reasonably prudent driving style, the officially stated consumption of 4.6 liters can be easily achieved on the 890 SMT, even under the direction of the KTM guides at the presentation, who should know the word prudence from hearsay at best. The consumption was only 5.9 liters per 100 km. All the points mentioned and the fact that the SMT can be upgraded with almost all the power parts that are also available for the 890 Adventure leads me to conclude that the Kintem 890 SMT is currently the best because most universal on-road travel motorcycle in the KTM stable. The best comes at the end, just presented. The 890 SMT will soon be available at your trusted KTM dealer. Conclusion on the KTM 890 SMT 2023 The KTM 890 SMT is the perfect street all-rounder. A commuter ride with low fuel consumption and enough everyday practicality for the daily ride to work. After work, it can put the fear of God into friends on the home track and take the two of you on a week-long motorcycle vacation to Sardinia. It can handle all of this with ease. If you can get along with the polarizing Kiska design, you'll get a superb motorcycle that leaves hardly anything to be desired. If you're as excited about the 890 SMT as I am, please leave a comment and tell us about your experience. And don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you like the video. Also, I'd recommend subscribing to our channel so you don't miss any of our future videos. We have a lot more exciting content planned that you won't want to miss. Stay tuned and enjoy the ride.